Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Andy, the Painting Fireman. Thanks so much for joining me. Wow, we hit, I think, 100, 125 uh, subscribers, so that's that's really awesome. I, I'm, uh, I'm thrilled about that. Uh, so thank you very much for subscribing and watching. Uh, today, we're I'm going to try something new. I'm not going to edit this video at all. Um, we'll see how it goes. I, I thought about doing like a Northern Lights kind of painting today for you. So we're going to... We're going to start right from where I start uh, and right to the finish without edit, edit, editing uh, anything. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming along for the ride. I'll show you what we've got done so far. All I've done is painted um, black gesso onto uh, the canvas. So I use Bob Ross black gesso. Uh, it's just a, a black acrylic paint, but it's specifically designed for this kind of oil painting. So if you're gonna do black canvases, I highly suggest that gesso. I used to use um, just uh, plain old acrylic black paint and then I found this stuff, awesome. Uh, and I think it's like 15 bucks for that big bottle. So it'll last you quite a long time. Anyway, um, let's go up and let's start from where I start, I guess. So first thing we do, um, first thing we do is we take a little bit of Bob Ross uh, clear and we're just going to apply it to the canvas. Now this uh, clear, almost like a clear coat almost, I guess, but it stays wet for quite a long time. Um, you want to put a little bit on, a little bit lasts you quite a long time. So uh, when you're putting it on, uh, you smear it all over. And what's going to happen is I'm going to take a, just a shop towel or a paper towel, whichever you want, and wipe most of it off. Uh, the idea here is just to get everything covered. And this will allow your paint to, um, it, it'll stay the true color. It's not gonna mix like with the white that we put on our canvas when we do wet on wet. Uh, it'll allow true colors to show. So whatever kind of color you have in the bottle, that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, when we do our wet, when we do our wet on our wet on wet with our liquid white, it kind of mixes so uh, and makes a lighter color. So, so first off, we're just gonna put a little bit on here. That's about all we need. And you want to take a towel. And I kind of use these. Sometimes I'll use these blue shop towels. You can get at your hardware store. You can use paper towel too, but. A fine paper towel leaves a bit of lint behind and you're just going to wipe it down and you're just taking a little bit of that excess excess liquid clear off so it doesn't run on you. If you have too much on there, um, your paint, when it dries, it'll kind of it'll run because it's just too wet. So just take your towel back and forth. You don't want to take all of it off, but you can see, you can see how I'm taking, um, taking a little bit off. You, you might see some of the gesso come off too, but that's, that's no problem. I won't worry too much about it. Just make sure you get your sides and your corners too. All right. Uh, for Northern Lights, I kind of like, um, using phthalo green. It's just a really nice color. Uh, we'll mix some phthalo green, or we got some phthalo green here. I got some Prussian blue, Elizabeth crimson. So you mix these two and it makes like a purple. So I'm going to put a mountain in there, but the top part of the sky is going to be our, our Northern lights. So we can take our one inch brush, dip it right into this, right into this green. And I kind of, when I start Northern lights, I kind of, um, try and figure out where I want the lights to shine the most. So all I do is I take my, my brush and just kind of make a design um, in the sky. And after what's going to happen, I'm going to take white paint and put white paint on top and it'll really come alive. So um, behind the mountains, I kind of want a purple glow. So all we're going to do is we're just going to kind of throw this green on here. Just kind of where I think the lights might shine. Uh, if you haven't seen Northern Lights, a good idea, just take a, go, just do a Google search. Like, not everybody can see Northern Lights where they live. 
Um, we're fortunate enough here in the province I live, we get northern lights here a lot. Um, and they're beautiful. And they come in all sorts of different kind of shapes and colors. And you'll get purple ones and green ones. And yeah, it's really neat. So, and all I'm doing is kind of putting it in certain places, just that green, just where I think it might shine the most. And we're going to fill the rest of the sky up with uh, purple and, and a dark blue here. Yeah, Northern Lights are kind of neat, just the way they shine and form. And just random, really kind of randomish spots. And you'll see when we put the white on there, it's going to make a really neat neat flow I guess. All right you don't even need to clean your brush really just go into that blue and we're just going to make a purple so lives in crimson and blue just tap that tap that in there and just we're going to try and avoid the the green that we put in the sky so I just want kind of purple on the bottom just purple on the bottom and then we're going to transition to that blue color there but I'm really trying to avoid getting into the into the green I don't want to cover up all that stuff I just did and you can put some up here just kind of avoiding a little bit and even further down we don't know how far where our mountain is going to be so we can always put some down here actually I forgot to put some, <laughs> put some in the we're gonna have some water on the bottom, so I'll go back there. So we're gonna go more blue now, a little bit more blue. And just scrub it in. No real technique, like you're not holding the brush a certain way or whatever. You can hold it like as if you're painting proper or you can hold it like I'm painting. It really doesn't, doesn't matter how you do this. We're just scrubbing in some color to begin with. And grab some more paint when you need it. We're going to throw some stars in there too, I think. I'll show you how to do the stars. It's a really cool way I saw how to do it. And maybe we'll put, we'll go into a little bit more lizard crimson. And you can, you can just throw in hints, hints of color here and there. Lizard crimson, I don't want too much everywhere. But just hints of it. And you can go ahead and wash your brush. I kind of forgot to do that bottom where our water is. So I just needed to clean the brush because I wanted that green back. And uh, in the bottom, same thing, just kind of general. You're not going to get an exact uh, duplicate of, of, your, of your sky. But as long as you have something down there that's kind of close enough, I guess. Doesn't need to be super accurate. And then go back into your blue again, purple. Right down here. Fill in this water. Just with that purple. And you can finish off with your more blue than anything on the bottom here. We might not even see any of this on the bottom, but we'll see where what happens where we put land and we put water. It's always okay to fill in kind of that bottom part. Like I said, all we're doing is filling in. Just trying to avoid that green that we put in there. There we go. All right, and you can go and take your your bigger brush if you want to blend some of that out. Just a little tip too with uh, when you're using your liquid clear, it doesn't uh, mix well with your uh, with your uh, liquid clear. They kind of it's like a chemical reaction. You don't want to you don't want to mix those two. It doesn't it doesn't hurt you or anything, but it just kind of does something to the canvas. So. Uh, make sure you have a dry brush when you when you're doing any kind of blending. So I'm just sweeping over some of it. 
don't want to blend it too much because I want to keep that green in there. I just want to make sure that I got pretty much everything covered. That looks okay. All right, so we're going to start with our fan brush and we will go into some of our white. And I use Bob Ross, Bob Ross paints, by the way, you can use whatever kind of paint, just don't use dollar store paint. It's not worth it. They're kind of really too oily. So just take some white on your brush and you really want to figure out, you kind of want to follow where that green is that you put on there. Cause that's kind of how I decided where, where my lights would be. And you just want to scrub in. Scrub in some resemblance of northern lights here. Now we're going to phase these out, kind of make them all blurry. And press harder in some spots and lighter in the others. Maybe this one here, he comes around. I'm just kind of trying to follow that green kind of sketch I made before, just with the green paint. And it's pretty random. They do have a bit of shape to them, but nothing too crazy. Remember we put that, uh, put a bit of that purple on the bottom. So um, we'll just take our two inch brush. And I think we just pull them, we'll just pull them straight up this time. Well, almost straight up, I guess. A little, maybe a little bit of an angle. And we can always, we're always going to go back and add some more, add some more uh, white to our, add some more white to our uh, northern lights just to, Just to, uh, you know, sharpen them up and make some of them brighter and some of them less bright. So, so this one here, kind of a lot brighter. Just go in and add some more paint to it. And maybe this one down here. Add some more. I kind of like the way this one went. Just certain spots. We're going to fill in that bottom a little bit with our other colors. And again, take that, make some longer. Make this here. And, and you can turn your brush sideways, right? Make some longer, some shorter. This one I want long, so you just kind of go out longer. These ones I want short, because I just kind of like the way that turned out. Nice and bright. And you can take a little bit of white paint, and I'm talking a very, very little bit of white paint, and we're just gonna scrub in a bit of color here, or a bit of white paint, just kind of make it a fog fog color and that's just that purple that we put underneath right just want it to be just a little bit foggy on the bottom we'll put a mountain in there so it'll cover up some of it but I just want that illusion that there's a sky there just making it a little bit foggy
just going around and have a look and see maybe a little bit brighter over here just add a little bit of just a tinge of that white Pretty simple way to do northern lights here on our big canvas. All right, I kind of like the way that that kind of looks already. I don't think I'm going to do very much more to it. You can always go back and have a look up and across. There, I like that. I think that turned out okay, just like that. I just like the, the free flow in this of the, uh, the lights and you got a little bit of cloud. All right, let's put some, uh, let's put some stars in there. And for stars, we're going to take some of our liquid white and just trying to find a brush here. me for a minute while I clean that. Like I said, make sure that it's dry. You're going to dip just kind of like the end, just the end of your brush. I don't know if you can see that. Just the end of your brush into your liquid white. You're going to take your knife and you're just going to gently go across. And you can put as many stars as you want and you're just going to flick them on there. You can go heavy, you can go light, whatever. I think we're gonna have lots of stars today. Why not? It's your painting. You know, you, uh, like I said before, and like Bob Ross always said, as soon as you bought your first paintbrush and first paint set, you got your artist license. You can do <laughs> whatever you, you figure you wanna do. No one should tell you any different. If it makes you happy and, uh, you know, painting makes you happy, keep doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. All right. Um, we're going to go into our just mountain color. I'm going to throw some black in there because I kind of want a darker, darker color. Now, Bob Ross uh, sells mountain color paint, and I think it's just a mixture of, like, alizarin crimson and blue and things like that. This makes it easier, but I kind of want to darken it up. So pull that flat out, you're going to grab your little roll of paint and we're going to throw in a mountain in here. Be really kind of whichever way you want your mountain to go. We'll go right over that <laughs> northern light, but that's okay. That just adds a little depth to our painting. And press down really hard. Press down. Go. And maybe we're going to put a, I, I want a big gap here. I think that would kind of look good if we had like a big gap in the mountain and then it comes up again around. So maybe we'll put some like a, almost like a valley, I guess you would say in here. That's kind of what I'm going for. Pressing pretty hard, you can hear me scraping away. I usually, uh, I just like to say, I usually put out my painting videos on Sunday, um, but yesterday we had a we had a pretty big fire call. Um, there was a grass fire just outside of town, and uh, yeah, we were there a good six, seven hours trying to fight that fire. Um, so it is the season. So if you're, <laughs> if you have any brush piles or you live on a farm or something like that, just make sure they're out, right? Um, it's pretty dry out there. So just, just be extra careful. If you have like friends over make sure that fire pits out. I don't want 
my painting videos to turn into firefighting videos, but uh, it kind of comes with the territory, I suppose. So just make sure that your uh, your fires are out and uh, and uh, you know everything's safe. So I like to keep it that way. I like to be out of business. You know, I don't uh, I like to not go to fire calls, but you know what? I have to go. I have to go. All right, clean, clean brush. We're gonna stick a little bit of white paint in there just because. And we're gonna draw some of this out here. Draw some of that out. The big old mountains in the back. Our big valley here. Now just make sure that you're leaving the tops, okay? I just put that white paint on just to kind of, so it's easier for the camera to see what's going on. Just draw some of this out. And you can blend out the bottom. All right, now let's go into, we're gonna take our white paint Pull that white paint out. Might add just, just a little bit of blue. Just a tad bit of blue. Not very much at all. Just to kind of change the temperature of that white. And draw it out and go across. All right. Let's figure out right here. I think we'll put. some snow or whatever and let's go here I'm barely touching barely touching the canvas at all just so slight just letting that stuff break at the bottom and when you cut across you cut across and you kind of want that little roll of paint I don't know if you can really hard to show you but that little roll of paint that's what helps you out that's what uh, that's what causes this paint to break like it does that one goes right in front we're gonna have that big valley but we're gonna move some of that snow kind of over a little bit as we kind of progress a little bit maybe maybe this one here a little bit All right, kind of don't like the way that turned out, so let's just scrape it off here. No big issue. Take some of that mountain mixture again. And just like that, we kind of fixed our mountain there. No big deal. Like I said, I'm trying not to edit this one at all. All right, let's try this one again here. Just this guy here. Yeah, that's better. All right, this one I think is going to be kind of in the front. Maybe we'll, yeah, we'll figure out where we put our trees in a minute. Let's make up a shadow color. And we're going to take that mountain color and mix it with some white and make like a purple, purplish color here. Maybe a little darker. And with your shadow color, you can always um, kind of test it out first. I think I want that a little darker anyways. Maybe even throw some black in there. Just darken it up. And you can always put some on. If you don't like it, scrape her off. Try again. All right, let's see what we got. So, a little roll of paint, and we're gonna come across here. 
put our shadows in. Basically the same kind of technique. And don't worry about how straight everything looks. We're going to fix that up anyways. Let's go with this one here. Remember this, we got this kind of valley happening here. We're gonna bring that other side of snow there. Let's go down this way. We're gonna make this a little edgier, I guess you would say. All right. And we go back and forth with our, our darks and our lights. So we can take this, move it across a little bit. Create that. So it's not quite a straight line at all. Maybe this one, he comes straight across there. that way created kind of a ridge there which is kind of cool let's push now I'm gonna push this mountain right here all the way back and I'll show you how to do that just take your roll of paint and you can go right in front of it and it just pushes all of those ones back it's a really cool effect All right, sorry, I need to put some more my white paint on here. We'll fill in this kind of edge here of our valley that we got going. There, that looks cool. In there, kind of valley shadows meet there. And it's such a light touch with your uh, with your knife. I'm barely, barely holding on, barely holding on to it. Maybe we'll give this guy in the back just a little bit of highlight, just so we know he's in the back there. And then we can bring this guy all the way this way, kind of in front. There we go. Let's go back into our shadow color. We didn't shadow this guy here, so. Shadows are super important. Um, wherever there's, wherever there's going to be light, there needs to be some sort of darkness in there. So, you see it up here. We kind of add a little bit more, maybe, maybe more of the shadow, kind of this way in those rocks. You can take you can take your knife and use the little part of your knife. This one back here in some shadow. And let's make this front mountain a little, little bit more edgy, I guess. Take that shadow. And then you can go back and you can have a look and see, um, you know, I noticed here it kind of missed a little bit. There we go. This one went right in front, right? Boy, that's a quite, quite the mountain that we got going. 
big mountain range. And you know what? I think we'll go up here and do that. I got a little green in there, but that's okay. Kind of goes with goes with the flow. Goes with the flow. All right, let's just add a little bit more here. There we go. Okay, let's take our clean brush. I'm just gonna clean this one off. Nice and dry. And we're gonna tap the bottom. We're gonna create kind of a mist and you can even dip some, some of it into your white if you want to. Just create that mist at the bottom of the mountain and gently upwards. We're gonna put some trees back there anyway, so most of this will be hidden. But we kind of want that bit of fog that kind of floats up from a mountain. Don't worry about this bottom part just yet. We're going to put some trees and we're going to have some reflections in our water here. And gently pull up. we go. All right, so let's take our fan brush and we're just going to go into black and a little bit of white. Black and white, nothing too uh, fancy about this one here. It's black and white. And just mix it on your brush. All right, we're going to put some trees in the back here. Just the indication of these trees are pretty far back. So I just kind of want, want the uh, almost silhouette, I guess. Some trees in the back. And all I'm doing is straight down with, with my fan brush, just varying the size of things. And we're going to darken it up as we kind of go forward, but I kind of want to make sure that you kind of see an illusion in the background there. Illusion of trees. There's misty trees in the back. Now we might not even, I might put a big set of trees here. So we're not super worried about anything there. Just straight up and down. And as we come forward, we'll just darken it up. So as you come forward in a painting, things get darker. So we kind of want to darken that purple, black, kind of white color almost. And we'll begin putting just some more trees in there. Now these ones are a little more pronounced. See them a little bit better. We're going to take the bottom part of this and make uh, make some reflections because we're going to have some water just on the bottom part of this. Just kind of making that illusion and maybe there's one in here that you can maybe see a branch or two so just go ahead with the corner of your brush just ever so slightly if you don't like what you did like i just did right there make it into a long tree <laughs> just make it into a long tree and it'll just kind of disappear on you Maybe some taller ones Now 
you gotta remember this too it's kind of nighttime so um, you're not gonna see all the detail in the in the trees and whatnot all right let's take some white I gotta get some more white on my palette here just straight white and we're gonna make some uh, reflections don't worry too much about the sides because I think I'm gonna put a tree on this side maybe a corner of a tree here and we'll see we'll see I don't really have a plan just take some white and let's find out where our lines are shoreline we're just gonna drop her down shoreline is again but most important this has to be straight down gonna make all of our reflections and everything on our straight down can't say that enough and you can always add white paint on all I'm doing is adding white paint to it certain spots maybe I want brighter flip it over it's like we're gonna put a tree there so clean off that excess paint gently across just on the water part gently across There we go, instant reflections. All right, and what you can do is you can take your, your knife and we're gonna put in just the indication of a water line there. So just dip your, dip your knife into your white and I think maybe right there is shoreline. Maybe this one's a bit ahead. Maybe there's some trees ahead of it. These trees kind of are in the back. Maybe there's like a outcrop of trees here. So you can just, as long as these are straight, you can straight across here and then move up and make a water line here. And that'll instantly kind of push those back. Same with here. So back there, I went back. I'm still going straight, but I'm moving up. And watch what happens. See how this part looks way in the back now. And it's just because I changed the, I changed the uh, angle of it. I'm still going straight across, but I just moved up a little bit. And this stand of trees kind of made it to the front. And you can add in, add in some water lines here. I like adding this stuff in now because, you know, some of it might be covered and some might not be covered. So, I, you know, it's, it's just the way <laughs> the way it goes sometimes. All right, let's mix. Um, we're going to put a couple trees on the side here, I think. So I just need some black. Excuse me. I'm going to mix, mix black and Prussian blue. Black and Prussian blue. Maybe a little bit of sap green. Why not? We'll make some evergreen trees. Sap green, black, Prussian blue. Just a really dark color. You can mix it up on your palette here. All right, and we're gonna take our handy dandy fan brush after I clean it up. Put some of that dark paint you just made. And maybe right, right here, we'll put 
a nice little evergreen tree. A little bit too much paint on there. All right. So you can just slowly create your evergreen tree. And as we go down, we can press a little harder, load up. And right there, good. Let's give him a friend, why not, eh? Let's give him a friend right here. There we go, just a little friend. is there's his buddy and I think maybe we'll have like a little island there like that'll be another little stretch of land there we'll put one more little guy there maybe that's a little family of trees we'll highlight them in a minute just a little guy there And you can just fill in the bottom here. Let's go to this side. And I noticed I got a lot of paint on this mountain here. Um, it might affect the way that you put your trees in. So you can just go in, as long as this is getting covered up, you can take some of that mountain away. And we'll put a big old tree there instead. Same way we did the other side. You can see we went right in front of where that mountain was. And load up when you need to. I think we'll put some bushes and stuff here. So just you can take your take your fan brush. I'm going to take the one inch brush in a minute and do the same thing. And it'll just create some little neat. And maybe a little guy. Same with this side. I'm going to highlight those trees too. Alright, let's get some. We're going to get some Phthalo blue, I think, this time, if I can find it. Phthalo blue. And white. Now, I think we're going to use um, liquid white because I got a lot of paint on there. And one of the big things is, uh, one of the big things, uh, um, thick paint or a thin paint will stick to a thick paint so you can take your liquid white and mix it with your blue there oh that's white i'm gonna find my blue not too sure where my blue went Got it. there we go like i said completely unedited this is just uh, straight up how long it takes me to paint some stuff and all the stuff that I do in between. <laughs> all right, let's mix up this blue and white kind of color. And we're going to add some liquid white to the mix. Just to thin it out. And we'll put some on there. We'll see how it looks. Okay, let's start on this side here. Just highlighting some of those trees where you think the snow might be. I'm going to put a big bush there, I think. So we're not going to go all the way to the bottom. Don't forget about this guy. Just highlight here and 
there's really no light, but um, I think the light, if there was, or moonlight, is coming from this side here. So we'll just add, add some color to this tree, and we'll put some bushes in the front. Gonna miss the spot there. Same with this guy here. And this guy here. There we go. Now you want to take your um, knife and you can go ahead and just put an indication of maybe some tree trunks. It's just an indication. You can put uh, you can put paint on it, but really all this stuff kind of disappears almost. So I don't usually put paint on it. I just kind of make that indication as long as, as long as you can kind of see it really. Just adding some on this other side, just a little bit. All right, uh, we need to take our one inch brush, which is kind of lost in the shuffle here. Excuse me while I put some of this away. There we go. Um, you can take some of that same color that you made the tree with, pull in one direction, one direction, and that little round part will go up. And that'll create kind of these little weeds and things just in the front here. And same with over here, maybe we'll put just a couple things sticking out here. Now we need a little reflection there as well. So before we get too ahead of ourselves, we can take our, our big brush, just a little bit of color on it. Let's find a spot where the water will reflect these bushes. Just subtle, subtle reflection there. And then go across. And then we'll drop in a nice little water line. Just with my liquid white again. Liquid white. Drop in a little water line there. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Let's clean that one inch brush and we're going to make our little bushes. Kind of like that blue color that we got on the trees. So let's take that blue color, tap it in. So all I'm doing is tapping it in and we're going to make some nice cool little bushes here. There's a couple. There we go. And you really want to leave kind of the dark space in between. So important that you do one bush at a time and we leave a little gap. Leave a little gap of that space. We can go and highlight some of these with white if we want to. One bush at a time. bottom here and we can take some pure white clean off that brush again dip it in your liquid white get that on your brush and just certain spots just maybe where the moon is kind of hitting these just super light This one here gets a little bit more. And the other thing you can do is take your, take your fan brush, do the same thing with that white, just in certain spots of that tree, just brighten up a few 
and I'm talking very, very little. Very little. All right, almost done. The last thing I'm going to do is you can scratch in like I usually like to do. Scratch in some weeds and some sticks that are hanging out here. And all I'm doing is taking that knife. You can even dip it just in a little bit of your liquid white. And you can make those sticks as long as you want. Maybe there's some in the back here. Just scratch it in. And kind of have a last look around and kind of see a little bit a little bit of snow on this other side of these branches. And we need some sticks and stuff over here too. Can't forget this side. Always, there's always dead, dead fall and dead sticks kind of everywhere. All right, last thing we need to do is let's sign our name. I'm gonna take that, that nice blue color that we made. It's a wonderful color, kind of the snowy blue color. And just roll your, roll your liner brush in that blue. You can even take some of your liquid white, thin it out. And we'll sign this one and I think we almost got to finish painting. All right. All right, completely unedited. That's about as long as it takes me to do a, a painting. So uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for joining me. My name's Andy the, <laughs> Andy, Andy the Painting Fireman. Andy the Painting Fireman. Uh, thanks again for joining. If you like this kind of stuff, just uh, subscribe and like and uh, watch some other videos. And I hope you get some great ideas from it. So keep your shiny side up. Have a good night, everyone.